back for my last lesson of the week. Um, my Facebook is still spinning here, so hopefully it is connecting. Um, welcome to Friday. I am excited to, um, oh, there it goes. Hopefully it worked. So um, I am excited to be back for my last lesson of the week. Um, and I am really excited again. Uh, it seems like I'm excited every day <laughs> whenever I do this, but I'm really excited for the text I am going to teach with today because chances are this is a text that you have never heard before because it is not available to my knowledge to be purchased in the United States. <laughs> so I am um, teaching with, with a book that I am willing to bet very few people own in this part of the world. So um, it's Friday and it is another beautiful day. It is supposed to be beautiful outside. I have my light blue on today because it is, the sky is a beautiful light blue, with some clouds in it. Um, it's going to be a great weekend. Just make sure that you are doing what you need to do, socially distancing. We have to make sure that we are staying safe and doing everything that we need at this time. Listening to all of our governors, listening to President Trump and Vice President Pence, making sure that we're doing what we need. So um, I'm ready to get started. Today, and or I guess I should say yesterday, I mentioned, oops, I just hit my computer. <laughs> Um, yesterday, I mentioned that I taught with this text by Susan Middleton Elia, and it was Rubio and the Three Osos, Goldilocks, Gold, Gold Hair, Blondie, and the Three Bears. Um, and I said that we were going to be revisiting that text again today. So if you have, if you were not able to watch the video from yesterday, you probably want to go back and watch my Thursday, April 2nd video so that you can hear the text um, read to you then. Um, because what we're going to do, we're going to revisit that, do the text that I am teaching with today, and we are comparing and contrasting. So I wrote Friday on there and my sunshine because it's pretty. So um, we are going to do something just like earlier this week. I talked about that a lot of people um, know KWL charts pretty well. Um, this is something that you probably know pretty well also, but it is still an extremely valuable tool to be able to find similarities and differences. To compare means to see how things are the same. Uh, to contrast means to see how things are different. So um, an easy way to do that is by something called a Venn diagram. So that's what we are going to do today. It is not the only way that you can compare and contrast, but I would venture to say it is probably the most common that teachers use, and it is um, probably the easiest for boys and girls to understand. Because all of Venn, let me see if I can move this and put the ding, there we go. Um, all of Venn diagram needs paper and pencil or a whiteboard and, and marker, something like that, and two big circles. Now, sometimes when I have boys and girls do a Venn diagram themselves, they want to draw the circles. They're like, and I say, can you write in that? No, no. You need to write circles that take up um, quite a bit on your paper or on your whiteboard because we are gonna to need to write inside of these. So let me show you the text that we're gonna to do today. As I said, I'm very excited about this text because it's one that um, I actually bought. I need to tell you this. Um, so I guess it was, it'll be two years ago in June so here coming up this summer, my husband and I, we went on an amazing journey and we spent 16 or 17 days in the country of Australia. And Australia is beautiful. And I'm so glad that I got to see it before the wildfires uh, devastated Australia this past winter, our winter, their summer, obviously. So the book that I bought it was published by Scholastic in Australia, not Scholastic here in the United States. It is 
Goldilocks and the Three Koalas. So we are going in it, um, to use this text. It is by Kel Richards and um, Claire Richards. So I would assume that they are both husband and wife. So this is another version of a fractured fairy tale based on the idea of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Yesterday had a um, Spanish theme to it. This one is an Aussie theme. So um, it was published by Scholastic, as you could see, dot AU, which stands for Australia. So um, this is something that we are going to read. And like I said, I never heard this text because it was published halfway around the world or on the other side of the world from us here in the States. Okay. So I am ready to get started with Goldilocks and the three koalas. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my two texts and I am going to write, fill out my Venn diagram just so that we are ready to go. So in the first box, I'm going to put Rubia because that was my text from yesterday, Rubio, Rubia and the Three Osos. I didn't write the entire title. I just wrote a, part, a portion of it, but I can tell that I know that I'm going to be focusing on that text here. I wrote myself a note. This one over here, if I just write Goldilocks, there are so many different versions of Goldilocks, but it's called Goldilocks and the Three Koalas. So I am probably going to um, shorten that title to three, koalas. And I got to see koalas in the wild. I got to pet a koala. And I and I tell boys and girls that um, you think of koalas as being super, super soft or that they would be, but in actuality, they, they're hard to explain. Some of them, there is a softness about them, but there's also a coarseness about their fur. And those words are antonyms, but it, they're not as soft as you would think. I guess their fur is very, very thick and, and, and I guess that they have to use it to protect themselves from being in the wild all the time and in trees. And, you know, it, it's a little bit, um, it does have a coarseness to it and a little bit of um, maybe a little kind of slight oily feel in, in places maybe, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, and I forgot the last part too. In the center, I always have boys and girls write the word both. And I always say that that is probably the easier part to do first, to do the both first and then find the differences. Okay, so now I'm officially ready to read. Goldilocks and the Three Koalas by Kel Richards and Claire Richards. Everyone called her Goldilocks, although her name was Shirley, because she had a mass of hair, fluffy blonde and curly. She loved to go on long bush walks, the Australian bush. She always walked alone, a foolish thing to do, of course, even with a mobile phone. In other parts of the world, they call them mobile or mobile phones. In the United States, cell phones. Then one day, after walking far and feeling not too well, she came upon a wattle hut. Wattle is a type of um, bush, like kind of tree bush that they have there, and rang the front door bell. I learned all about the wattle. In fact, you can actually eat parts of the wattle plant, some of the seeds, and it's quite good, actually. I had some. I also learned that Australia's flag, when we were there, had the same colors as the United States, red, white, and blue. But if you ever see them competing like in the Olympics or other things like that, they wear gold and green all the time. So I asked that, why do they wear gold? Why do you wear gold and green and everything is gold and green, yet your official colors are red, white, and blue. And they said probably to distinguish from the United States and um, like Great Britain, who also uses red, white, and blue, because those two countries are so well known wearing those country colors, especially the United States. Um, 
but they wear green and gold for the wattle plant, which has like yellow, little yellow flowers in the green leaves. So they use that to represent themselves, a, cut, a plant that's native to Australia. You learn something every day. Her ring remained unanswered, but the door swung open wide. So after calling out, good day, she boldly walked inside. On the cottage walls, she saw a map of the small town of Sofala, several flying china ducks, and a photo of Father Koala. There's the map and Father Koala. So she has made the poor choice. He walked right in. The cottage was deserted with breakfast laid for three. She tried the gum leaf porridge, but cried, this one's too hot for me. Australia. Oh, no, made herself right at home. So the first one's too hot. Shirley, known as Goldilocks, tried sitting on the chairs, but she found them all too hard, too soft, or covered in long gray hairs. That one's messy. Long gray hairs, koalas. She tiptoed to the bedroom and tried out all the beds. This one's too hard and this too soft, but this is just right, she said. So there she is. Oh, looks like she's getting ready to take a nap. Just then the koalas got back home after their morning stroll. Our porridge should be cool by now, said Mum. In fact, quite cold. In Australia and places like Great Britain, they, instead of saying Mom, M-O-M, they say Mum, M-U-N, Mummy. Who's been eating my porridge, Father Koala muttered, and sitting upon the furniture, angrily he spluttered. Father, mother, come here quick, Baby called from the bedroom door. There they saw young Shirley asleep and heard her loudly snore. Oop, I skipped a page. There we go. Shirley woke up with a sudden start and saw she wasn't alone, but Shirley didn't panic. She reached for her mobile phone. Triple zero, she rapidly dialed. In the United States, it's 911. In Australia, zero, zero, zero. And said, police, come quick. While she, the puzzled koalas were looking on, the police arrived in the nick. So have you ever heard the saying, the nick of time? In the nick. So she's worried, but she's the one that broke into their home. Shirley. In the nick of time, that is, and picked up Cheryl and took her straight back home. So there's her home in the bush. And the model is, when you go out, always carry a mobile phone. So the motto, the theme, we talked about theme. So the theme of this story, always carry a mobile phone. Be able to communicate. If you are out by yourself, you gotta be careful. So um, now I have not one, but both of my texts from yesterday and today next to me, if I need to use them, I can easily do that. So now I'm going to tilt this back so that you can see easily. And I am going to start with where it's, I, like I was saying earlier, I think it's easiest if we start with the similarities, comparing them, because sometimes boys and girls, if they want to start with Ruby, they'll say, well, in this case, this happened. I'll say, now, wait a minute, didn't that happen here too? So if we try to focus on the similarities first, 
We'll get that out of the way and then maybe we can see things that only fit into either place. So um, the first thing for both, we could say um, Goldilocks broke into a home, right? So Goldilocks broke it. And I usually kind of put maybe a little dot or a dash next to my, um, next to what I write, just to kind of keep my eye seeing where my ideas pop up here. So obviously we saw the similarities in Rubia. It was La Sopa, the, so the soup. This was, um, gum tree porridge, I think. But so she ate something, she sat in chairs, and then she went to sleep. So there's my rule of three. Remember I talked about a fairy tale rule of three, three different things, and also three different family members that in the home that she broke into. So she ate, sat in chairs, and slept in bed. So another thing that was the same that we could say that was similar were there was daddy, mommy, and baby, right? And these don't have to be complete sentences. So there's daddy, mommy, and baby. Um, and if I need to, sometimes boys and girls get caught up and say, but I've run out of room. I, I can't do anymore. Well, if I think of something else, I can always write it above it, below it, draw an arrow to show that it goes in the both section. So now let's think of just things for Rubia. Okay. So yes, she ate in all three, but what was it she ate? She ate la sopa. So she ate la sopa. Over here for Rubia, what else did she do when she made the poor choice? Well, when she was found out, how did she get away? If I remember, so the bears see and they're getting angry. Oh, she had to escape and run away, didn't she? She jumped out of the window, went down the tree. So I can say, she escaped by running away. So she escaped by running away. Then what did she do? Well, after she went home, she realized her poor choice. So how did she make it up to them? She decided that she would do what? Do you remember? She decided that she would go home because she ate some of their meal. She said, I'm going to go home and I'm going to make it up to them and take la sopa and take it back to them. So she made homemade sopa. and brought it back. So she tried to make up for her poor choice. So now for three koalas, what was it that she ate? So we know that there were the, the similarity was that she ate, right? For the three koalas, it said that she ate, let's go back. She ate the gum leaf porridge, yeah, made from the gum tree, which gum trees are um, eucalyptus trees. They're also called gum trees. But interesting fact I also learned, um, koalas, that's the only thing that they eat is eucalyptus. And as amazing and, and adorable as those animals are, sometimes 
people don't want them in their trees. Like if they have a, a gum tree in their front yard or backyard, a eucalyptus tree, the koala moves in, it can strip a tree within a day because they just eat and eat and eat. But one thing that koalas do, they're very picky about the gum trees that they eat. They can use their nose. And in eucalyptus trees, the leaves contain a poison called cyanide. And cyanide to humans is extremely poisonous. I mean, it can, it can kill, a, in trace amounts can kill a human. Well, koalas are able to digest the cyanide, some of it, but their nose is so good, they can smell the gum trees that don't have too much cyanide that it will kill them. If they are eating, it means that their super sniffer, like a dog super sniffer I talked about in one of my lessons a while back, if they're eating, they could sniff it and know, ooh, that one has too much, or it's like Goldilocks baby bear porridge. It's just right. So I can eat this one. Hmm. Another interesting fact. Um, so what she was eating gum tree porridge, which we know she normally couldn't eat, but this is a fairy tale, so she could. So she ate, my marker is drying out a little bit here. Can we see that? Hmm. There we go. Yep. So she ate gum leaf porridge. And porridge, if you don't know what that is, it's like oatmeal or cream of wheat, something like that. So she ate gum leaf porridge instead. Now, we sit over here, she escaped by running away. How did she escape? She pulled out her mobile phone and dialed triple zero, 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 which is their equivalent to 911 in Australia. So she used her mobile, which we usually call it mobile in the States. They say mobile. She used her mobile phone to call, I'm going to put it in quotes, zero, zero, zero. Oh, no period. And the police rescued her. And then over here, it said she made homemade sofa and brought it back, but what did she do here at the end? Well, she just went home and learned, always keep your mobile phone. Okay, let me turn that down a little bit. And do you see that I kind of wrote out of my circles here? It's kind of a diagonal off to the side. Do you think that anybody is going to sit there and tell me, oh, no, your work, I, I, I can't take that. I'm not even going to read it because it's not in the circle. No, not at all. All that I, I know, care about as a teacher now, I need to be able to read your work. You have to be able to draw it, and I guarantee this goes for your teachers too. You have to be able to write it so that we can read it. It can't be sloppy. I call it junkily done. We have no time for junkily done things as teachers. But if you go outside of that circle, I know it's supposed to be in that circle. That's okay. I care more about what you have written versus if it fits perfectly somewhere. That's going to show me what kind of a reader you are. So that is what I have for today. Thank you for joining me again today. I look forward to seeing you. I have a whole bunch of lessons for next week already. Um, so stay tuned. And I'm going to keep teaching you. I know um, I here I'm teaching in the state of Indiana. Just yesterday, Governor Holcomb, our Indiana state governor, has said that we are not going back to school this year.
And we are going to continue e-learning. And right now, my student's last day was supposed to be May 21st. Now it looks like it's probably going to be May 15th based on what Governor Holcomb has put in. So I'm planning on doing these at least through um, the middle or even the end of May. So I want you to keep on learning from me. I'm here for you. Until Monday, two little poodles. Goodbye. Be good this weekend and social distance.